Hi, my name is Kaylee. I'm a librarian at Mentor Public Library. My name is Meg and I'm also a librarian here at Mentor Public Library and welcome to All Booked Up with Kaylee and Meg. Each week we've been going over some book recommendations that hopefully you might find interesting and might want to even check out for yourself. Uh, this week we're going to be going over adult fiction books with suspense. So all those thrilling edge your seat reads you can't put down, um, maybe there's some surprise twists in the way. So that's the books that hopefully will pique your interest today. Yes, and uh, all of the books that we are discussing today are available digitally with your library card via Libby by Overdrive or Hoopla. And since we are now doing drive through and curbside service, you could also call and request to have these picked up at any one of our branches. Absolutely. And without further, further ado, our first book today is going to be by a Scandinavian author. So any fans of Stig Larsson, this book is called A Nearly Normal Family by M.T. Edwardson. A very interesting title. I don't know of any nearly normal families. Yep, I don't think they exist, but <laughs> anyway. Uh, so in this book, we, we have a three-person family. There's 18-year-old Stella, her dad, Adam, and her mom, Ulrika. And they're, they seem like a pretty happy, stable family. Uh, the daughter is about to go on a trip to Asia. She's kind of been a daddy's girl her whole life. Um, but as you read this story, there's a couple cracks that start to surface. So her mom is a defense attorney and she's an absolute workaholic. So she pretty much doesn't see her mom too much. And then her dad, while she grew up loving him, he is kind of controlling. He's obsessed with who she's hanging out with, what she's doing all the time. So she feels a little restricted. So Stella decides, hey, I want to go on a trip to Asia to kind of get away from, you know, she feels a little constricted. And basically, right before she leaves for Asia, her and her best friend go out on the town just for a night of fun, and they run into this shady businessman named Chris. Um, and there's kind of sparks flying between her and Chris. Now, Chris is 15 years older than Stella. Uh, and so it's a little, she's a little leery at first, but it seems like they like each other. But then about 14 days later, Chris ends up dead. Uh, mysteriously, have no idea what happened, and Stella becomes the prime suspect. And mm -hmm. her parents are just totally thrown off. They're like, why is our daughter being suspected? Our daughter would never hang out with anyone like him. So it's a really interesting story about what the lies your family keeps from each other. Do, they re do you really know everyone in your family as well as you think you do? And what lengths would you go to protect your family even if you secretly believe they're guilty of what they've done. So it's kind of one of those interesting family dynamic thrillers that, you know, you don't know the truth of the whole truth until like the very end, but it's well worth the read. It kind of reminds me of Defending Jacob, which is now like a TV show on one of the streaming services. But I read that book a while ago and it's the same thing. Like one of the parents is um, a lawyer or something and their child is accused of a crime. Oh man, what would you do in that situation? It's pretty crazy. So Exactly. It challenges a lot of things. Yeah. Um, well, the first book that I have um, is called All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. Um, and this I like one that name? <laughs> this one has been uh, compared to The Girl on the Train. Okay. So if you read that, this might yep. be a comparable read. Um, so this is about Nicolette, Nick, who had left home 10 years ago and never looked back after her best friend went missing one summer. Oh, it was the summer of their senior year. And after her best friend Corinne disappeared without a trace, Nick just kind of disappeared herself and bailed on the town. Yeah. Well now 10 years later, she's back because her father is sick and isn't living at home anymore. And she's gonna clean up the house and try to take care of things while he's in a nursing home. And coming back brings back all the memories of that summer yeah. and all of the different things that happened. And she questions everything about what happened to Corinne, um, including who was really involved and, you know, did Corinne just run away one night or, you know, did something foul play happen? And the main yeah. suspects back then were Nick herself, Nick's boyfriend, Tyler, Nick's brother, 
um, Daniel and Corinne's boyfriend, Jackson. And coming back home, she runs into all these same characters, including her ex-boyfriend, Tyler, who is dating the very much younger Annalise um, that Corinne or that Nick remembers right. from the night that Corinne disappeared as a little girl. Well, being back home now, she's thinking a lot about this when suddenly Annalise disappears. And it's very similar to how Corinne disappeared. And a lot of the same characters are involved. And it, she tries to figure out what happened to Annalise and largely what happened to Corinne all those years ago. And this book is very unusual because it's told backwards. So you That's come cool. into the book um, when she's just gotten back into town, but then the book jumps ahead to day 15. And then it works back and each chapter is working backwards, day 15, day 14, until you get back to day one. But somehow the author manages to still keep you on the edge of your seat through this whole thing while Nick investigates what happened all those years ago and questions her own memory and discovers things along the way, even working backwards. And you have to read the book in the right order. I had someone in my book club who read this book backwards, like literally flipped it and I got so mad. Yes. At it. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. I think this books like these with these type of plots are so cool for people who like maybe true crime shows like Dateline and stuff. Um, oh, yeah. I always try to get my mom to read these type of books. She loves Dateline and like disappearing, missing person <laughs> stories. So I think this sounds like a, a totally cool book, right? If you like true crime, I think that sounds like a really cool book. Yeah, and this one has so many twists that you will never see coming. Awesome. Love it. <laughs> um, so my next book is called The Mother-in-Law by Sally Hepworth. So is the mother-in-law a nice lady? Well, it's kind of the whole, <laughs> the whole book is kind of hinging on that. That's kind of the whole thing. So it's interesting. Okay. So the main character is Lucy, and she's about to marry Oliver, and she loves him, and it's a very happy relationship. And she meets the mother-in-law, Diana. And she really wants to make a great impression on Diana because Diana is actually a very respected person in her community. She's very um, into social justice and helping people. And so she has a great reputation. But when Lucy you know, meets Diana, she just get, feels this chill vibe that there's nothing that she can do to get any closer to her. And it's, it's kind of mysterious. She's like, I, I want to measure up to my mother-in-law, but I, I just can't. And this goes on for, you know, most of her marriage. And then, ten, and then the book jumps 10 years ahead. One day, mysteriously, Diana is found dead and with a suicide note next to her. Uh, but when she's, her body is examined, they think there's also signs of suffocation. So maybe it wasn't entirely suicide. So that's kind of the whole thing. Was it suicide? Was it not? And then thrown into all this is all a whole bunch of family dynamics with um, Oliver's family and basically all the secrets everyone's keeping from each other. So basically is, what is it? The book really comes down to what sort of a person is this mother-in-law? <laughs> <laughs> and and you know there's it's it's one of those like if you like character studies as well in your thrillers where you're kind of looking into the psychology of a character um, it's really interesting in that way both of your books have like weird fi family dynamics they do. i noticed that <laughs> i'm like well why did i pick that <laughs> no, <but> well <laughs> my next book the main character has no family so that's my bad segue there. Nice. <laughs> the next book I have is called um, The Intern's Handbook by Shane Kuhn. Okay. And um, this book is basically an action movie in written word. So cool. <laughs> um, so this book is um, the main character, John Lago, is writing to new recruits from his company, HR Inc. That's how the book is told. Um, and it's basically like a survival company that, you know, you leave a note behind for your predecessor kind of idea, except he's um, retiring at age 25, which might what? seem a little young. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds nice, retiring at 25. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, but, you know, he's been working pretty hard for HR Inc. for a while. Okay, um, okay. And 
on the surface right now, John is working 80 hours a week as an intern at this high profile law firm in New York. Okay. And he does what all interns do. He does all the grunt work. He makes right. the coffee. He runs the errands, answers phones, that kind of stuff. Okay. But John is actually a hired assassin uh, hired to kill one of the firm's partners. And Whoa. the internship is his cover story to get in the door and to blend in enough in order to make the assassination seamless without a trace left behind. Oh Don't worry, he is very skilled at this. It's not his first rodeo. Okay, so, so this isn't like the movie with uh, Anne Hathaway and Robert De Niro. The answer no. is totally different, man. No. Um, so he is, he works for HR Inc., which is a cover for hired assassins. Man. And he's been doing this for years, but now he's 25. And their whole MO is that they send people in as interns to blend in because interns are invisible and nobody notices them and nobody would suspect them. And so now he's getting up in age and he can no longer pass for a young intern. Wow. So he's going to retire. Man. And people in his line of work very rarely make it to age 25. Right, right. So he is looking forward to finishing up this last job and moving on with his life. Right. But even though so many of his jobs have always gone seamlessly, this last job is just not going right. And it seems that there might be someone else out to get his target and maybe him. Um, and like I said, it reads like an action movie. Yeah, but I was going to say. A lot of like sarcasm and snark, which I super appreciate. Um, <laughs> it's pretty violent, but there's a lot of twists and it just goes so fast. Wow. I, yeah, I love those kind of reads. You just can't put them down. So sounds good. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening once again to All Booked Up with Kaylee and Meg. We hope you enjoyed our recommendations and maybe hopefully found one that seemed interesting that you might want to check out. Once again, they should all be available through either Libby or Hoopla as an ebook or audiobook. Um, so mm -hmm. you can watch it through your phone or on a tablet or on your computer. Um, so exactly. next week, hopefully. Um, we are going to be looking at teen books next time, and we're going to be doing teen historical fiction. So if you like books set in the past, we'll probably try and find a few different time eras to, to look at. So it'll be fun. Yes. Come time travel with us next week, and hopefully you enjoyed <laughs> some of our recommendations today, and we will see you next time. Happy reading!